CCM Cafe, I'm Doug, and it's time to introduce the Afters! Hey. Excited for some brand new music. Mm. We're going to talk about that, see what you guys yeah. have been up to. But uh, start, start with family. Yes. And my understanding that you guys are getting older. I mean, your kids are getting older. <laughs> it happens so fast. Uh, we all have kids. Uh, been married now. I've been married 22 years. Dude. If you're doing the math. That means I got married when I was like 12. Wow. No, just kidding. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it's awesome. We have, we have a senior in the house now. And he's, uh, he's excited about what's next. And mm -hmm. it's cool to see that happening. We have a 16-year-old who just got her driver's license. And uh, I don't know if you've ever had a kid at that stage in life. But yeah. it's a little terrifying. Yeah. And so I was the one to take her out driving, and uh, she likes the curbs a whole lot. <laughs> so we've done a lot of curb checking. Yep. Jesus Take the Wheel has a whole new meaning in our house. <laughs> but uh, Matt, Matt's got a senior in the house, yeah, too. Yeah, my daughter's graduating uh, and going off to college. It's crazy. Wow. I fortunately am not teaching anyone to drive right now. Uh, which I, you know, I can only handle st so much stress in my life. <laughs> my daughter actually picked it up really easy. My boys, I think they're going to be, they'll, they'll be good too. But yeah. my boys are 14 and 11, so we got, a, we still got a little ways to, okay. uh, to handle that. All so, right, pace yeah. it. And I saw the other day that Arden voted for the first time. She did. Like well, that was, I mean, there's like a few firsts, you know, like sh she's real excited about that. But yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, kids, I have three. <laughs> Three of them, uh, ten, Younger. five, mm -hmm. and three. Okay, okay. So no driving yet. All right. <laughs> and you recently had you had your in-laws move down from New York, and they're staying yeah. with you guys, living with you guys, <laughs> and they the grandparents. <laughs> they were and a, a giant <laughs> pack of dogs. You have a very full house. We, uh, I don't know what we're thinking. I don't. No. It takes no. a village. My wife's family was a it's part of the great like New York exodus that okay. happened during the pandemic. Okay. And so they are all living not only in Nashville, but in our house. We kind of knew if the only way for them to move down is if we, if we had a place for them to stay while they transitioned. Okay. And uh, we're a year, a little over a year in, and we're still going. We're still alive. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And That's when you awesome. go in the door, they all came with a dog. So when you open the door... It's like a giant pack of dogs coming to <laughs> There's awesome. a lot of love in the family. There's a lot of love. This is true. That's yeah. cool. So, is so true. talk about what, what is it like? I mean, I know as my kids got older, and especially when they start transitioning to those more adult things, what, how, how, how does that make you feel? What, what, what are you thinking about that? It's like it's a wrestling point for you it as is. a It is. It's marker. bittersweet. It's bittersweet because you want them to grow up and move off and, and pursue their own dreams in life. And, but then there's a part of it. You still want them to be that kid who's cuddling with you on the couch, you know, watching movies and, and uh, things, things just kind of change a little bit. But it's bittersweet. It's also very exciting. Very cool. Yeah, we're very excited for what's next. And uh, my kids, they, they, they kind of have dreams for the future. and It's cool to see that unfold. Well, I'm all about scoring points, especially with our wives. So tell me how amazing they are. <laughs> Pretty <Amazing>. great. <laughs> amazing. Matt and I, we got married a year apart. Uh, so you got married in 2000. 2000. I got married in 2019. Uh, and then Dan got married a little bit after that. 2012. Yeah. All right. So you've got it all figured out. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the other day, um, I lost my wedding ring. Dude. You did? Yes, Ooh, 12 years pop. in. Full pop. 12 years in. Were you moisturizing? And you okay, couldn't. this is strange. Now, maybe you guys can speak into this. I'm not like a ask for God for a sign type of person. That's not my typical like prayer. But this morning, this morning that I lost my ring, uh, I was just asking for a sign that day, and then mm. I lost my wedding ring. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why you it means that's you why need to buy a new wedding ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Time not a spiritual shopping. do and over. I was on my way to church, and I think it just it just you know. We, it fell out. So mm, marriage is great. You get wedding the ring, not so much. Okay. It's, but you went, I'm like, it fell out. How did it? Uh, you're maybe just. I'm losing what? Oh. The, the afters workout. You, one thing that's really cool as you see your kids get older is I've loved seeing things that I poured into the kids uh, earlier that you wonder, are they even listening? Mm -hmm. You know, you're sharing life advice. And there's times I thought, okay, this is going in one ear and out the other. And now that they're at an age where they're starting to date, they're starting to uh, grow up mm -hmm. and they're facing life decisions. And I'm seeing the fruit of taking that time and uh, pouring into them when they were younger. And there's times when conversations come up and I'm like, you were listening when this came up before. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's, it's awesome. So, I was, yeah, so even when you think they're not listening, they really are. They're soaking it up like a sponge. But I will say, and you've probably experienced this too, you can tell them many things, but when their friends or other people tell them the same thing, those get to be the geniuses <laughs> just because we're the parents, right? 
very often. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I will never understand the that phenomenon. That yeah. doesn't make. We any were sense. guilty of it when we were younger too. We sure. probably like were. Sure. Yes, our parents in just. Fairness. Yeah. Talk a little bit about international stuff. Even mm -hmm. in spite of COVID, I understand that you've had international experiences still with the Billy Graham organization mm -hmm. and those kind of things. Yeah, we travel around the world a lot. We've been to what, like 35 different countries? And uh, you know, with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, we've been in places like Cambodia and uh, Albania. We got to go to Albania and play in the, uh, the, the old government assembly, which was uh, communist. Oh, wow. And they had the only atheist, it was actually in their constitution, they were an atheist government. And this was the first big Christian event to be held in their communist assembly. And it was so awesome. It was so cool. So places like that, Scotland, Norway, uh, and a lot of places in between. But even during COVID, uh, we went to Canada and did a run across Canada. And then we needed to film a music video. So we started looking at places that we could go for a music video. And it was going to be just uh, as expensive to go back home as it would be to go to Europe. So we went over to Europe and filmed our music video in, uh, in Belgium. Oh, ah, yeah, found a good deal to Belgium. So that works for CCM magazine. But anyway, you should look into it. It was amazing. <laughs> what would be a country then if uh, if it wasn't this country? What country from all that you've seen would be like, I could see my family living here. Yeah, there is no place like home. It always feels good to come back home. Uh, we love New Zealand a whole lot. Mm. It's a pretty magical place. And then uh, Norway is is also a fantastic. The people there are so friendly, so happy. I would say Norway, and yeah. it's, it really is the the people. Like they're, they are such a friendly, and just warm people. And we have friends there, and they're all the nicest people. I told my wife, I said, "There's a place called Norway where people have not realized how bad the rest of the world is. <laughs> they're just so innocent and and yeah. just kind and sweet." And and uh, and I said, We're, "You're going to go there." And I'm, I built it up so much, it's probably going to be disappointing, because mm -hmm. it's also so beautiful that it looks like every mountain and river is landscaped. And, mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. just the way it is there. And uh, she came with us on a trip, and she said, "I did not upsell it. They, it really was that great. It was so, beautiful. Yeah. So All right. Get a chance to go. All right. Plug the Norway. Go to Norway. All right. All right. Well, let's talk about new music. There's a new song out. Give us a little history, a yeah. little thought about how that came to be. Yeah, we've been uh, working on a lot of new music, especially during uh, these COVID years, and a lot of time to reflect and and uh, and dive into to new music. And uh, "Say Goodbye, Say Hello" is our new single, and it really came out of a season. You know, th the last couple years have been so trying, and there's so many of us who have dealt with mental health issues and felt just the weight mm -hmm. of of everything that's come with uh, all the events of these of these years, and. Uh, and Say Goodbye, Say Hello is about leaving behind some of those things that you don't want to bring in the future. There's things that drag us down and hold us back, and uh, that doesn't have to be a part of the future. We can, we can leave that in the past. And, and uh, I love the, the passage in 1 Corinthians 5.17. Uh, it says, you belong, if you belong to God, you are a new creation. Your old life is gone, and your new life has begun. And uh, that hit close to home for me with my family. I have a sister uh, who walked away from her faith when she was in college. And uh, she wanted to be Indiana Jones. That was her dream. Mm. She wanted to go and be an archaeologist and, and do digs. And, and so uh, she went to Israel, actually started studying underneath one of the top archaeologists in the whole world. And he was an atheist. And his whole goal was to prove that the Bible was nothing but fairy tales and fables. And, wow. and she started to buy into it. She believed it. And so uh, when she would come visit, she would just try to debate and, and talk to us about how, oh, well, the Exodus didn't happen and Moses wasn't real. And, and we'd just go through the Bible and try to just pick it apart. And it just broke my parents' heart. And uh, my dad, he passed away in 2004. But shortly before he passed away, he gave my sister his Bible. Mm. And it was his Bible that had all of his notes in it and that he highlighted a lot of passages in. And he said, I know this doesn't mean anything to you right now, but I hope that you'll keep it. And he said, my prayer is that someday this will mean something to you. So she just put it on her bookshelf, and it sat there for more than a decade. And then there was a season that she and her husband, who's Israeli, that, uh, that they went through that was just a really hard season for them. And she started having these dreams that Jesus was showing up. Hmm. And she called me one day. She said, Jesus is showing up in my dreams, and I don't like it. I said, well, maybe you should pay attention. And uh, there was one night where the, the dream was so strong she couldn't go back to sleep. And she got up and walked into her living room, and she saw that Bible sitting on her bookshelf. And for the first time since my dad gave it to her, she walked over and opened it up, and then there was, there was a passage that was highlighted by my dad, 
and it spoke directly to what she was feeling right wow. then. And for the next two nights, she kept going back, and she would open up that Bible, and there would there'd be a scripture that spoke directly to what she was feeling. And I got a phone call from my sister. It was the middle of the night for her, and uh, she said, Josh, I want to give my life to Jesus. And so I prayed with her. Three months later, she flew to Arizona, where I live, and I got to baptize my sister. Oh. And not only that, but her husband, who is an Israeli Jew, he gave his life to Jesus. And uh, last September, they actually moved back to Israel, and they've just been on fire. Wow. Like, I've seen such a huge transformation in their lives. They moved back to Israel, and they started uh, this ministry uh, to reach out to the Jewish community, to reach out to people who are in archaeology, in science, to show that you can believe in history, mm -hmm. you can believe in science, and you can also believe in Jesus, and that all the things in the Bible are true, and that, that archaeology supports it. So Man, pretty exciting. That's but, awesome. But seeing that transformation reminded me, like, okay, God can change any heart. Yeah. God can turn any situation around. And so whatever your situation is, uh, God can, can redeem it. He can restore it. You're not stuck in that place. Whatever the things are that, that, that weigh you down or hold you back from being uh, living the life that you want, like you can, you can get that over to God. And, and uh, uh, life with Jesus and a future with Jesus, the, the path that he has for us is, is the best life we could have. Incredible so, so seeing that in my sister is, is awesome. I mean, to see that for parents and others that are struggling with that same thing about kids that have wandered away as a reminder, we yeah. train them up in the way that they should go so that when they're older, they wouldn't depart from it. That's our hope and that's, that's our prayer. Hope. Yeah, and I love my dad's faith in that very thing because my dad didn't get to see the fruit mm. of taking that, that act in faith and giving that Bible to her. He really believed that God was going to use that to change her heart, but he never got to see the fruit of it. But in faith, he did it. And uh, my mom, all along the way, she was the one who would encourage the rest of us to not give up. Keep praying. Keep praying. Like God, God can, He's going to bring her back. And sure enough. Well, kudos to Dad for not giving up. I know, sadly, mm -hmm. some parents may feel like they want to throw on the towel and just, but we can't. Mm -mm. As long as there's That's breath, important. there's hope. Yeah. When he, the other songs that you're working on, the other themes and things, what are, what are some of those other messages or things that you feel God is calling you to communicate to us through mm. music? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of songs that deal with, uh, like we, we love writing songs that are kind of soundtracks for parts of your life. That's something that I feel like we've done since the beginning. You know, I've always wanted to have a song that you could put on when, when your baby is being born mm. or a song that you could have on for your birthday or for your wedding that you could walk down the aisle to. And so uh, we, have, we have some songs that are kind of in that space that, you know, it kind of could define a, a piece of your life. And, uh, you know, well done. We, we hear so many stories from people who say, you know, I played this song at, at my loved one's funeral or, or remembrance. And, and so, yeah, there's a lot of songs on the new record that, that kind of tie into a piece of life. Perfect. Is there a message or an encouragement or something? Just if someone's going to catch one thing, what would you tell them? You know, I love This Is Our Moment. Because it's all about living in the moment, taking in what God has for us. I feel like as a, as a culture, sometimes we get so caught up in this rat race that we're living. And it's so easy to live with distraction just all around us. We have this, this device that we carry around on us that's constantly dinging and, and wanting our attention. And, uh, and sometimes we lose track of what's happening right around us. And sometimes it's really amazing things. And so uh, I love that that's a song that really talks about living living in the moment this is this is the moment that, that god gave you mm -hmm. and uh, to just take that in and be grateful for it sometimes we get s going so busy that we lose track of all the things that god is doing around us and we wonder god where are you but if we really slow down and look we're going to see his fingerprints all over it i think uh, to me to me say hello say goodbye is per is a perfect encapsulation of my last year um mm. and i just like i came to this realization of like right about the time we were writing the song that you know my daughter is graduating from high school and i have missed so many opportunities to pray for her and prayer's always been not my strong suit you know like i'm there's some things that maybe i'm a little better at in my walk with the lord and then some that i'm not as good at and prayer is one of those things that i just really uh have just kind of struggled to um whether it's make time to do or feel like i'm really you know accomplishing something in prayer or whatever. Um, and I just realized, you know, my excuses that I just don't really make time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that I don't have time until I look at my screen time on my phone. I'm like, Oh, I have <laughs> lots of time. I gave it to Instagram. Oh, how much time? You know? for scrolling through <laughs> yeah. Instagram. So, 
Yeah. I just so I I decided that I was going to say goodbye mm -hmm. to living a prayer life like that and say hello to not picking up my phone until I'm done praying for every single person in, that I need to pray for in my life and people in my church yeah. and my community. Um, so this is my, this is my new, uh, you know, little, little way of like just turning off those old bad habits mm -hmm. and turning on uh, new good habits that are bringing me closer to the Lord and, and bringing my family closer to the Lord. Like I've already seen fruit of, fruit of that in my in my own life in my family's life so and so if you ever can't get a hold of matt it's because yeah. he, he hasn't prayed yet that day so his phone's not on. nope so, can't look at it yet sorry not done or praying. if you don't get back to somebody right away maybe they're doing something more important yeah. than hanging on every sure. text or yeah. email or yeah. something to give each other grace to be able to go out there and live the lives I always like to say we need a little more face to face and a little less facebook mm -hmm. yeah so that's that good. we yeah. spend some that's time good. with uh -huh. the people that matter yeah. And it's a good excuse to, you know, if somebody's like, hey, uh, I, I texted you. Did you get my text? Oh, sorry. I was still praying at four in the afternoon. Um, so yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. That's, <laughs> a, that's a humble brag, man. That's beautiful. <laughs> Your prayer flex. <laughs> uh, I'm ki I'm kidding. Okay. I'm, I'm kidding. But I do love that practice to start out the day that way. And uh, because we all do use our phones a lot, that's a great, a great way to hold yourself accountable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.